Hello friends, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to transform my this nail into a beautiful long uh, square extensions, and I'm going to explain all the process in detail. And before we start, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified about all my new videos. So let's begin. As I mentioned in the beginning, I just removed my previous extension and I am just going to start with my natural nail preparation work. So at first what we are going to do is we are going to push back the cuticle and for that I have this uh, cuticle pusher and I am going to gently push back all the uh, dead skin and the cuticle and then I will be doing the rest of the uh, preparation. Prep work is really important when it comes to extensions uh, whether it's acrylic extension, gel extension or just a gel overlay or you are applying gel polish or you are trying to uh, you know use the press on nails always always do a little bit of preparation depending on the type of extension that you are going to use always ensure you are removing all kinds of dead, dead skins from your uh, nail surface there is no dead skin or leftover from the previous application so just uh, ensure that your nail surface is completely clean clean After the initial preparation, I am going to use my e-file to do the dry manicure. For that, I have uh, different bits here. So, I am going to use a couple of bits from this kit uh, to you know, prep my natural nails. So, for the dry manicure, I am using this bit and I am inserting that into my e-file and then I am going to use it to clean the rest of the dead skins and the cuticle area. When I am doing this, my e-file is at a 6000 RPM and I don't use more than that when I do this work. But in case if your uh, e-file is not a powerful one, then you can increase the speed a little bit. So as you can see what I am doing is, I am just trying to lift the uh, cuticle area skin uh, around the epnechium and I am trying to remove all the dead skin debris, everything that is there on the nail surface and the corners. And this way I can ensure that there is nothing on my nail surface. Once I am done with this, I am going to change the bit into a different one. As you can see, this is a little more uh, pointy one and I can reach my side walls wherever the other bit was not getting into. I can reach inside and then I can remove the remaining uh, dead skins and the uh, cuticles. You can also use the same bit to you know file off that extra shine from the nail surface. Uh, in case if you don't want to use the e-file on the nail surface, you can use the soft buffer the 180 side and you can buff off that shine from the nail surface. This is an important step because if your nail is oily or if there is like really high shine surface then the product won't stick to the uh, nail surface and the durability of the extension will be really less. So um, uh, since I just removed my extensions, I don't have to really do the uh, surface cleaning but I'm just going to do a touch up and then um, we should be good to go. After cleaning the nail surface, next I'm going to cut off that dead skin around the cuticle area using this cuticle cutter and just be very careful. This is not really mandatory but uh, it's good to do. Uh, if you're not comfortable, you can skip this part. Just ensure that there is no skin uh, in the nail surface. Once you're done, you can clean the nail surface either using a wet pipe or a cotton dipped in alcohol and you can clean all the dust particles and uh, the, even the shine from the nails, whatever is remaining, you can remove it like that. Next, it's time to apply a dehydrator. I'm using Mia Secret uh, Dehydrator. Uh, this tip is again important because this, was, this will help to remove any remaining oil residue from the nail surface. And as you can see, when you apply it, it immediately evaporates. So uh, apply the uh, dehydrator and once it's done, then you can move on to the next step, which is the primer application. Next, I am going to use this acid-free primer by uh, Mia Secret and uh, apply a very thin layer of uh, primer onto your nail surface and you can let it dry. Even if it's not completely dried, it will be still fine but if possible, just let it dry completely. 
Now let's see the products I am going to use in this video. So as you can see we have monomer which is again from Mia Secret and I also have Mia Secret cover pink acrylic powder or polymer and uh, this is a beige color and this has a slight glittery finish and next I am going to use nail foams to sculpt my nails and uh, the last item that I need is a brush. Uh, as you can see on the screen I am using model 1's number 12 brush. Uh, this is a Kolinsky brush very good quality and also it is cheap before the uh, foam application I poured some liquid into the dip and dish and I kept it aside next important step in this extension process is the application of nail forms so uh, I have this form and as you can see I am using my cuticle pusher uh, which is in a cylindrical shape and I am rolling the form like that so this way I can have a little bend around that center area you can use any cylindrical object to create this uh, small bend and then you can peel off that sticker and this tiny piece you can apply it on the back side of the form uh, the reason why we are doing this is because it will give that foam a little more strength around the free edge area so this is where the natural nail is going to touch so we have a little uh, strength at this part anyways the foam is strong enough but this will give like a little extra strength now next is I am just aligning the foam I am ensuring that the center line of the foam is aligned with the uh, center bone of my finger so that is what we are going to align so for some people they may have like a little weird shaped nail so it might not be like the center of the nail might not be the center of the uh, finger bone so in that scenario we might end up fixing the foam in a tilted way and when you sculpt the nail it won't be really straight so ensure that we are aligning the center line of the foam with the center bone or the bone of our finger and then you just pinch the tip side of the foam you are still not going to stick the foam together uh, the next thing what I'm doing is I'm marking the um, side walls of my nail so I have little longer nail here but when we do the extension for our clients we are going to file off the natural nail to uh, you know really small uh, I wanted to grow my natural nails that's why I have that nails as it is but when we do the customer nails we will really file it down unless the customer requests us to you know keep the uh, length of the nail and after marking the side walls what I am doing is I am cutting a little V shape here so this way I can ensure that my foam is exactly fitting side to side and is center aligned after clipping the sides of the foam you can again put it back underneath the nails and you can fit the foam uh, when you do this again we have to uh, redo all the uh, measurements and settings that we were discussing earlier just ensure that the line is centered with your uh, center bone of the finger and then once you have aligned the foam you can just stick it like that so this is when you are going to stuck both the sides of the foam together and also when you do this you can form a cylindrical shape so now if you see from the top side of the foam it's like a cylinder right cylindrical object so this will help us to create a beautiful C curve and now another thing uh, if you see the flaps around my finger that is still open I haven't stuck that part yet uh, I'm still waiting and seeing uh, if there is any misalignment if my foam is like sometimes what happens we don't realize my, our foam must be for facing towards the left side or maybe it might be like a little downwards or maybe upwards so we just ensure that it's intact it's perfectly placed and that's when we uh, stuck the last flap together another uh, important thing that I wanted to uh, uh, explain is this gap between the two flaps here so uh, if our foam is towards the right or left what happens these flaps that won't be like this that the uh, one side of the foam will jump over the other side of the foam so it will overlap which means our fla our foam application is not straight it's either left side or right side so we have to check it again and then reapply the foam now that we are done with the uh, foam application it's time for the product application so for that I have uh, the liquid here I'm dipping my brush and I'm just uh, prepping the brush and after that I'm going to pick up the bead this is another important step when you do the acrylic extension the powder liquid powder ratio so uh, I dipped my brush and I uh, just tapped it 
uh, on the side walls of the deppen dish and then I dipped the other side of the brush into the product and I picked up the bead so the bead that you have seen on the screen is a perfect bead and then once you pick up the bead you can place the bead and start building the length and shape of your nail So I have placed the first bead, uh, the bead I placed it's not at the center, not at the free edge, it's in between the center and the free edge of my nail and then next what I did is I am using uh, the tip of the brush as well as the belly of the brush to flatten the product and I'm also building the length and shape of the nail. So now I'm just going bo uh, to, the, uh, to both the sides and I'm ensuring that I'm covering the nails completely and I'm building that square shape. So when when I do the extensions I make sure that the first bead is uh, giving me the length that I wanted and if required then I go for a second bead and then I extend that length but mostly I get the desired length with the first bead itself and then I go ahead and you know make it like a little thicker the way I wanted and then I go for the second bead and I build towards the cuticle area. Also, whenever uh, you know uh, uh, you apply the product, just look all the sides of the nails so, so that you can see that if you're missing some areas of the nail, you can just uh, come back and pick up another bead, and then you can ensure that you are covering that area so that we have a uniform area or uniform nail, uh, so uh, we don't miss any areas basically. So now I picked up another bead, just as I said, uh, the first bead I was able to get the uh, almost the length that I wanted but I wanted a little more longer so I picked up another bead and then I continued with the extension of the uh, uh, nail length. Once you are done with that first bead, the length and shape of the nail, you can just have a look at from all the angles just to see how perfect your application is. I, this is like not 100% uh, perfect but this is how it should be. And then uh, once this is done, uh, you can go ahead and uh, apply the second bead. That's what we are going to use to build the apex as well as the cuticle area. So I place the second bead and I am gently pushing it towards my cuticle area and then I am going to use the brush tip. And I'm going to feather it out just like that so this way now I'm not really pushing hard or I'm not uh, dragging all the product towards the free edge I'm just ensuring I'm getting that enough uh, height for my apex and then I'm also ensuring that it's close to my cuticle just ensure that you're not pushing the product underneath the skin of your nails so that will again cause lifting so always leave a little uh, one hairline gap between the product and your cuticle area Area and also ensure that there is no products uh, in the side wall just clean all the surroundings and then you can just manipulate the product and then you can just bring it towards the free edge and just uh, finish it off so now I have almost uh, done with the second bit now if you see uh, you can see that one line right so there is this line there is a gap between that second bead that I placed and the previous length that I bit so now we are going to cover this with another bead Next I picked up another bead and I placed it exactly at the center of the nail and then I am going to merge it uh, towards the back side so there is no further gap or imperfections right. So I just blended it and then I am using the tip of the tip and the belly again uh, of the brush and then I am feathering it towards the free edge area. So as you can see now we are getting a perfectly smooth surface right so that's how we wanted to do it. So if you are a beginner you may not be able to perfect the surface like this when you sculpt it I still don't get it all the time perfect but sometimes I get it sometimes I don't get it but uh, this is how we learn uh, if you're a beginner maybe there might be like uh, bulges and all but don't worry uh, with practice you will obviously reach uh, you know the perfection level and so now uh, my nails are almost ready so again the side view. side view is the best view to see that how your nails are so if there is any imperfection you can find it just look both the sides uh, and then uh, uh, you know the uh, cuticle area as well as the free edge from all the sides of your nail basically and uh, we are almost done with the sculpting for one nail now
after like uh, five minutes or something not even five minutes the nails were completely dried so you can just uh, hit it with something and you heard that uh, dry voice and that means the acrylic is completely dried then you can remove the uh, forms off so i'm just removing the forms off from my middle finger and then the rest i'll be doing off camera I have successfully completed all the five nails and our very important next step is to clean up the brush. As you know Kolinsky brushes are really expensive if you don't take care uh, it might give you a hole in your pocket. So better we clean it immediately. Any product that is stuck into the uh, uh, bristles of the brush uh, just dip your brush into the monomer and gently use an orange wood stick or a cuticle pressure like this and then try to remove whatever is remaining on the brush and if it's not coming off don't put so much pressure to you know remove that just put it back in the monomer for like five minutes or something and then uh, you can again use the orange wood stick just to remove it from the uh, from the bristles and after that just remove the excess monomer from the bristles like this and then you can keep it aside so this way if you do this right after the service then your brush will last for at least one year and if you take good care of it it may last for like more than one year so that's what i do right after the extensions and i have also cleaned the deep end dish what i did is the same uh, tissue i just inserted it into the deep end dish and i wiped it and that's how i clean my deep end dish so this is the final look of the nails now we have to file and shape it for the filing and shaping, I'll be using Model 1's 100 180 grit filer. So I'll be starting with the side walls. I'll uh, shape both the side walls and the tip of the nail and then I move on to the surface area of the nail. So as you can see, I'm doing the side walls and I'm also ensuring or uh, leveling the uh, edges of the nails. So as you can see, I got a clear, clean side walls. Uh, after this, I start with the nail surface filing. Once you are done with the side wall filing then we can start with the proper filing of the nails. So here I am going to uh, start from this cuticle area which will be my zone 1 and then I come towards the free edge area which is my zone 2 and once I am done with zone 1 and zone 2 I go to the other side of the nail where I will start again from the cuticle area which is my zone 3 and then come towards the free edge area of the other side and which is my zone 4. Once I am done with all these 4 areas then all I have to do is just level up the surface of the nail so here is the first side I am done the filing here now I go to the other side and repeat the same thing and lastly I just level up the surface of the nails Next I am going to move on to the soft buffer, here again I am going to use the 180 side and I am going to buff off any imperfections uh, that we have on the nail surface and then I use the other side which is the 180 side to smoothen out the surface and if you want you can also use that shining kind of file and if you do that it will look like a natural nail with a really shiny finish but I don't do that much hard work but this much is enough then when you apply the top coat it will be perfect uh, but this is what we do next and here is the final look of the thumbnail so what do you guys think Now we are almost done with the extension process. Our last step is to clean the nail surface area. So I am spraying some water just to clean up um, you know, all the dust and uh, debris around the cuticle area and the skin. Um, after this you can just wipe it or uh, what you can do is you can just go to the bathroom and clean your wash your hands and then you can uh, dry it. And once done um, as a next step what I do is I just spray some alcohol um, uh, just to remove any oil or something that is there and then um, I start with the top coat application or nail art whatever you wanted to do on the extension so you can do that 
so we are done this is the finished look there is no product nothing just plain extension i really love the way this one turned out i have a beautiful c curve perfect apex and everything is just perfect so i really love the way this one turned out um, if this video was helpful for you guys please do let me know uh, it took me a long time to record edit and upload this on youtube so please feel uh, free to subscribe bell icon uh, notification any comments you may have please drop in or any questions uh, please feel free to uh, leave your questions in the comment box uh, and all the products that i have used i'll put the links in the description box and i also have another video polygel extension and i also have another extension video for uh, acrylic coli so there is a playlist for extension videos so please do check out and i'll see you soon on my next video until then stay safe stay happy thank you